this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. No sooner did I sit down to start filming than it got super dark and it's about to start dumping rain or maybe even snow. It's quite cold here today. Now I'm going to talk today about something that perhaps seems a little tangential when we're talking about permaculture, but it's something I found really inspiring and I wanted to share with you all in case it was new to you and, and maybe would similarly be inspiring. My eldest two kids have always been very, very much into art. As a child, I was much more into music, paid, played several instruments, sang in the choir, and I always really wanted to encourage my kids in, toward music, and they just were not, that wasn't their jam. But drawing and painting, that was the thing that both of my girls could do all day long. And as a result, when they were very small, we started watching Oregon Art Beat, which is a show on our local public broadcasting featuring artists from around Oregon. And you learn a lot about the art movement here. You learn a lot about what kinds of sculptors and painters and all kinds of artists there are living in our state. And it's really, um, it's, it's really inspired my kids to take more art classes and to explore those artists. A few times when they've been out and about, they have actually met some of the artists they've seen on Oregon Art Beat. It is now dumping, absolutely dumping rain outside. I don't know if you can hear it. We'll keep going. I wanted to talk today about one artist in particular, and his name is Richard Reams. And we recently saw an Oregon art beat about him. And he is an artist who is maybe different than some of the other artists they've shown. His art is arbor sculpture. And this is a kind of art I have never heard of, but you know, when you, when you think about it and you learn a little bit more about it, it's something that has been practiced. Um, by people around the world for a long time, and he's kind of refined it into much more of an art form. Arbor sculpture is creating sculpture with living trees, right? So we watched this gentleman who, you know, uh, has for decades been sculpting chairs or, um, you know, hearts or, or arches out of living trees, very carefully, slowly tying, wiring, reminds me a little bit of bonsai, but on a huge scale with full size trees. And, you know, it's a really cool art form unto itself. But it was the way that Richard described his relationship with trees. And I've since read some articles by him. And he has a book about arbor sculpture that I will link to down below. He says he views his art form as having a long, slow conversation with the trees. And to me, that was just such a wonderful way to view it. He's not rushing. He's looking to have a relationship, a conversation with a living tree, shaping it, seeing the way the tree wants to grow and enhancing that into an art form. And it got me thinking a lot about permaculture and the way that we have long, slow conversations with trees in our permaculture systems. We are often grafting them ourselves when they are tiny little whips and we are nurturing them and we are shaping them for fruit product production. We are consciously choosing where we put them in the landscape and what relationships they will have with the other plants around them. We are you know, caring for them as they are blooming, enjoying the cascade of blossoms. We are continuing that conversation as we protect the growing fruit all the way through until harvest. And then when the tree is dormant in the winter, we continue that conversation by pruning the tree once again. And so, you know, while I think that Richard's art is really cool and really inspiring, and I think like, how can we utilize some of that in our permaculture, especially like maybe an urban permaculture where, where um, access to land and the size of our plots is really at a premium? How can we think about espalier as a form of art? How can we think about training those fans against a fence and having that be a, not only a way to produce food more sustainably, but also a form of artistic expression? But just for me, thinking more and more about that that sentence that he said about how we're having a long, slow conversation with the trees when we choose to engage in arbor sculpture, or for me, when I choose to engage in permaculture, it's really great to think about the slow, small solutions that we're striving for in permaculture and how there is no rush, right? 
in a fast paced American life, it can feel like we need to produce a product very quickly. And I think some artists think that way too. They need to be really prolific and they need to crank out some kind of commercial art form that the masses will want to purchase so that they can make a living off their art. And yet we see Richard working on a very, very different time scale, building, creating, crafting a relationship with the trees that takes years and years to get to his final product. Thinking about the fact that the sculpture that he's creating will live in one place and folks will have to come visit it. It is rooted in one place. It's not something he can pick up and move around. It's not something that can you can make prints of and can be mass produced. It is a slow, intimate connection with one tree or one group of trees to create a lasting impact in one place. And that sounds a lot like permaculture to me. And so I just really, I really enjoyed what he had to say. He says, the process is give and take. You say something and the tree says something back to you. And I think the way that we approach our permaculture, the way we approach those slow, small solutions in our permaculture design, we need to listen to what the trees are telling us. We need to listen to that relationship that we have, tune into the fact that we are not independent from the trees. They are not independent from us, but we are all connected in permaculture, right? We all are intertwined with each other, creating that kind of beautiful arbor sculpture out of you know, not only our physical relationship and the way that those plants grow out in our garden, but also in the intimate emotional relationship that we have with our trees. I know I love my trees. I know I get very sad when I have to take one out when its time has concluded in my garden. And I know I get very excited like a new mom bringing home a new tree for my garden. So um, I hope that that was encouraging to you. I'm going to link down below to the episode about it. I thought Richard was just such a delightful person. And also to Richard's books, he has a book out called How to Grow a Chair, which is quite delightful. Uh, I think about whether I, I could do that in my own garden where you actually have a living seat, a tree that you have shaped into a place to come and sit and rest and contemplate in your garden. What a cool thing to have in a permaculture garden and what a very slow intentional act to um, engage in when we're thinking about our permaculture being long-term permanent agriculture, being that slow, steady march toward resilience. I'm going to leave you here with a quote from Richard. He says, um, when talking about how he's aging and how, uh, you know, he views the way he engages with his art form and what it means to him, it sure seems like I could continue this for the rest of my life. It's gentle work and it's really fulfilling. That feels a lot like permaculture to me. It's gentle work and it's really fulfilling. So I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that you're inspired by the work of Richard Reams. I hope that you will think about how you could apply arbor sculpture or the philosophy of having a slow conversation with your trees in your permaculture garden. Please check out the ways you can support this channel down below and I'll be back very, very soon. Thank you.